hello everybody i hope you are having a fantastic day we've got some packages so it's time for a mailbag uh this package was actually part of something bigger and the box did not survive super well but i think you'll recognize what's inside this is one of those silicone soldering mats and uh it's a little it's a little wavy at the moment but i'm pretty sure it will completely flatten out but I love this thing and you've probably seen uh, it in many many of my videos and the problem is I keep moving this thing from place to place around the office so I decided that I wanted another one now um, these things actually this is my old one here and you can tell it's been heavily used uh, they're magnetic and they have a little part storage and a little component storage and um i run this thing through the dishwasher from time to time just kind of by itself i find similar things like that and just will run it through the dishwasher and get all the nastiness off of it and then usually run the dishwasher a second time just empty make sure i don't get any gunk on my dishes um but i wanted a second one and i will say this one feels yeah i guess i'd say the quality feels about the same um now the one thing i remember with these things is it has these little part boxes but if these things don't really stay shut, this might be better than the old ones that were on there. Uh, these things would always kind of pop open when I didn't want them to. Uh, yeah, so that part box is just kind of useless. So what I did on the other one and what I'm going to do on this one is to just take my knife and cut the top off because I don't want that there. So in other words, if that box does not work 100% of the time, I don't want it there at all. And I'll trim that up and make that a little bit prettier. But that is what I do with that. Um, many of you guys have asked about the soldering mat. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, you can set the iron on top of it. You can use it for splatter. It's cleanable. It has these little places to put the stuff. There's magnetic things. Can't say enough good stuff about the soldering mat. If you don't have one, get one. And the link for this and some of the other stuff will be in the description. Next up, we'll have something else that came in that same package, and I'm more doing this as a PSA. Uh, this is the Sweat Buster, and I had one of these before, and this thing is made to go inside of your bike helmet. Now, most of the time, it doesn't matter, but occasionally, I'll get a bike helmet where the sweat just runs straight in my face. And uh, I do some long distance cycling and things like that. So um, that's no way. Wow, this is a lot softer than the old one. The reason why I wanted to make this a PSA is I had a fairly significant bike crash a couple weeks ago. And um, I did not realize, so I actually went back and checked that I had hit my head and that I had actually done minor damage to my helmet, but definitely damage to my helmet. And uh, one of the things, if you do any kind of research at all, if your helmet takes an impact, even if it looks fine, you need to replace it. Um, I'm gonna say that again. If your helmet takes an impact, even if it looks fine, you need to replace it. That closed cell foam that is made to, to take an impact and there's no guarantee that it will take it um, the same way the second time. And if you have the money um, and you do any kind of riding at all, I highly recommend those MIPS style helmets. And I'm not gonna do a lot of uh, bike helmet talk on there, but um, highly recommend those MIPS helmets. Do a little bit of research on MIPS and you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, this thing is made to go inside the helmet and obviously you have to expand it out a little bit to make room for this but this thing is amazing for stopping sweat from dripping in your eyes and just absorbing all that sweat and i thought about it if i have a second one that i can throw one in the laundry and put this one in and switch them back and forth so i decided new helmet new sweatband i had to get my address out of the way um i don't know enough about it to talk about it authoritatively yet but there is a networking standard for the Atari line of computers called FujiNet and um, it allows you to communicate with other devices and uh, websites and all kinds of other stuff. Well, people have been working really hard to port FujiNet over to other computer systems. And so what this is, and this is why this pertains to this channel, this is an ESP32 inside of this thing. Uh, no screen on this one. Sometimes they have screens, sometimes they don't. Um, but this will plug in the back of the older Atari computers and allow you to connect them to the internet, allow you to load software remotely, allow you to set up a little server on your computer for um, for storing software and one of the things i talk about all the time is that when you have an old computer like this it's really hard 
to get new software on it if you don't have the right kind of discs. It's really hard to, uh, you know, to interface with it when you don't have modern ways of doing that. And so what this does is this brings the computer into the modern age. Now these pins look a little bit crooked there, um, but I can definitely fix that. And uh, I don't know enough about this device to give it a full review, but I'm gonna do that. And uh, then I'll kind of give you more of a detailed breakdown of it. Next up is a very simple one. These last two have actually come from the UK. They could have even been the same supplier for all I know. So this is a DIN connector, in this case, a seven pin DIN connector to USB cable, and it is made to power uh, an old Atari 8-bit computer. Now, um, again, this is not a retro channel per se, but there are some things that are interesting about this. The old power supplies that came with computers like this, the Atari, uh, what is this? this, is the XE system, um, they would go out of spec and they would actually go out of spec high, which means that although they were only five volt power supplies, all these pins, only five volts, um, over time, they would kind of drift up to six volts, seven volts, eight volts, and would wind up killing these classic, beautiful computers. And uh, as such, I decided that um, I was gonna wait to plug mine in until I got the proper cord for it. Now. I was going to DIY one of these things, but really when it came down to it, it wasn't that expensive to buy this one already made. And DIN connectors are not cheap. I wish I could get a giant assortment of DIN connectors. If anybody has a whole hoarding collection of DIN connectors, I would love to get some because um, they're kind of hard for me to come by in any kind of quantity right now. But as you can see on the back, this thing will fit in here and um, it only needs to supply five volts. Let's see if that feel? It's a little loose. Uh, it only needs to supply Oh, there we go. Only needs to supply five volts to the computer. And when it does, you can turn it on and you can plug in the FujiNet. And oh, that's so nice. It goes straight in there. So um, this is just if I want to plug in other things once the FujiNet is plugged in. But now you've got this um, computer that was from the, I believe, 80s. And now it is modernized with a normal switch mode power supply powered by USB. and able to connect to the internet and do all kinds of things you could have only dreamed of in the 80s. Okay, for the next two items, I had to open the box ahead of time because I had to pull a gift out for my wife. But uh, these are gold-plated um, RCA jacks, and I got them labeled as black and red, so that would be video and, I guess, write audio. Uh, so the idea is that these things are gonna be used in modifying those Ataris. If you've seen my video uh, about doing a composite mod on an Atari where you get better picture, better sound, a uh, funny thing happens when you do that, uh, people start asking you to modify their Ataris. So I have an absolute pile of Atari 2600s uh, sitting in my other room that need to be modified now. And so I'm going to be doing that. Now I ordered these in two styles. This is the first one that came in. The other two are on plates. And what my thought was is that uh, I wasn't sure what kind of depth I could get with these, but it looks like there's a good bit of depth so I can drill through the plastic case and put these uh, on there and screw it back in. There's plenty of room for the thickness of the plastic right there, as you can see. But what I was a little worried about is if anything went wrong, um, that I would, you know, would damage the shell of the Atari. So I also ordered a set that is two of them on a black plate. So in the event that I were to do something to absolutely just jack up the Atari, I could put one of the square plate ones or rectangular plate ones on there that would both hold the jacks and cover any hole that I might have made by mistake. So I've got two plans for modifying these 30 plus year old Ataris. Next up is uh, one that I have obviously not opened and it is a set of acoustic panels. There are, let's see how many are in here. There are 48 of them vacuum packed in here. Now I have uh, seen very mixed reviews on these and the people that like them say that the best thing to do is to either wet them or leave them out in the uh, heat a little bit. But the idea with these things is they're gonna help with the acoustics of Studio B, which is over there. And I may even put a couple in here because my acoustics are not great in this area. Um, but the idea is that 48 of these will cover some wall space and allow me to uh, 
you know, to have a little bit better audio, especially over there. And if nothing else, just when I'm talking over in the other part of the room, it's a complete echo chamber. So I'm going to go ahead and try to gently open this up and see what happens. Now, people complain about the vacuum packing, but these things would be impossible to ship if they weren't vacuum packed. Um, you know, there's just so much. I think they're like an inch plus thick. So, I mean, you'd be four feet thick. Um, just shipping these things. So they vacuum pack them and it's kind of nice. They vacuum pack them into uh, smaller sections, some more manageable sections. I'm guessing that is, I don't know, I don't know how many that is, maybe six. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open one up and see what happens. Give me like one of those Casper mattresses. Uh, so they're starting to expand and that's actually not bad. Um, you know, I was hoping they would be a little bit thicker, but I knew I had gotten the cheapest ones. And I think eventually they will grow a little bit bigger than this. But um, I just wanted some very basic acoustic tiles for that part of my office. They do have a little bit of a smell. They smell almost like a stain or shellac or something like that. Uh, so I don't know. But these things will, I'll let them air out. I'll let them uh, degas outside and put them in there and maybe what i'll do is i'll shoot a little bit of audio before and after now they sell these things in all kinds of quantities you can get them as few as i think six and as many as hundreds uh and they do also sell them in kits where they are you can get red and black together or red and blue together or black and blue together um i went with all black because the way my room is set up i'm probably not gonna be able to get the kind of pattern uh that you would want and so i'm gonna go ahead they're growing over here next to me making all kinds of crinkly noise i'm gonna go ahead and try some of these and see how that works out so this is what the thing sounds like and looks like with the uh panels in i think it makes a pretty big difference i just put it up with some spray adhesive i'll have links to that and everything else in the description but what do you think do you think it makes a big difference and last but not least we have this box here and I probably should have said those acoustic panels are also around $40. If I didn't put that up on the screen for 48 of them. Um, so these things are little, and I mean little, uh, LED light panels to aid with some of the lighting. Now, I don't want you guys to get it twisted. I am not trying to update the quality of my YouTube channel. Um, please don't mistake me for someone who cares. Um, it would kind of ruin my reputation now i had had a whole wow oh, these are terrible uh i had a whole bunch of companies sending me these lights probably two years ago and there were a lot of like battery backup ones i probably shouldn't rip that there's a good chance i'm going to return these um there were a lot of ones that had batteries on them and had hot shoe mounts and stuff like that for uh cameras and stuff like that but these ones are um even cheaper and I just need a little bit of fill light. I don't know if you guys know, but the only lights that I use to record with are two little puck lights that I put under this shelf. And I don't even honestly know if I was doing YouTube when I started uh, when I started um, making this place. And so all I had done was put some little puck lights there and they work but you can especially see for some reason it seems like the second half of my videos wind up being kind of red um and so that drives me nuts and i just also i didn't build this area for having bright lights it was just a desk and so i wanted to give myself the ability to just have a little bit more light uh so i don't know that these are going to be super helpful but the idea is that they can add a little bit of fill light and when you consider that i'm really only let's see if i can count them while they're on uh, i really only have 20 leds where the light above my head this could be an improvement maybe add some filling in so uh, let's try to get something with some texture maybe let's take this thing here uh, that's got a screen on it that would show some reflection and i'll take this drill here and again none of that looks awful to my eyes i'm not very uh artistic but we're gonna go with this and let's see let's turn it on and so again i'm thinking more along the lines i just feel like it makes more shadows um to be honest with you mo light mo shadows i am seeing a little bit of flickering but actually that's not bad um i think straight up you know if i start getting off axis a little bit you're gonna get some crazy shadows but straight up uh, seems to be doing okay. Now, what I have to see is, am I getting any kind of uh, shutter flutter 
from that but i could see having one or two of these as a little bit of extra light in here um could be helpful there's a light if you want to see it uh so i got three of them for 45 dollars, and they came with stands that i'll probably not even take out of the box in fact the only reason i'm not throwing these out is in case i decide to return the lights so um these are not the well, I guess maybe they are the cheapest lights. Uh, these are not the best lights, but they have 70 LEDs each. So 210 LEDs for 40 bucks. So 20 cents an LED. Uh, and they came with the USB cables. And I guess the ability, I don't know if they are on the brightest setting or not. Yeah. Oh, they get brighter. Okay. So I have the ability to dim it. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think overall for like my quality of YouTube channel, uh, I think this might be a good solution. So I'm not sad about this purchase. Maybe what I'll do is I'll set them up and then we'll kind of do a before and after.